3-1 winners at Stamford Bridge. Amongst the goals, one Phil Foden. He now has six in all competitions this season. Let's see what he thought about it all. Phil, was that not just an excellent victory, but Manchester City back to their swaggering best? I believe so, yeah. The first half was um, brilliant, you know, to be three goals up. Um, it's not always easy to go into the second half, three goals up, to play the same way. And you probably could tell the second half, we dropped off a bit and let them have it. So, um, overall, a great performance and it don't put us in a bad position now with the games in hand. How long do you think it's been since we saw a performance like that? Well, certainly was it the best this season? I believe that we played um, good every game, but we just not finished our chances. But um, today, yeah, it was a brilliant performance and was more, much more clinical in the, in the final third. Was it more than taking your chances today? Was there a fluidity, a sharpness about you? Um, yeah, you know, we had that little break from the, from the last game. Maybe that helped us out to have the energy today. Um, but yeah, it was a great performance and everyone played top today. You more than played your part. How much was the instruction from Pep to attack them on the flanks, get at the full-backs? Yeah, you know, he always has great tactics coming into big games like this. Um, he's a genius at things like this. And, and yeah, as you, could, as you could tell today, we played the right way and um, we definitely done them staying high and wide and, and down the flank. So it was something that we, we did well. He also seemed to make a point of seeking you out on the final whistle to tell you how well you've done. What does that mean to you? Yeah, you know, it means a lot when you put 100% um, into a game to, to get that, um, you know, a good um, shout off the manager. It feels nice, you know. Um, and yeah, I'm enjoying my football and I, and I just want to keep enjoying it. Third time he's uh, played 90 minutes in the league this season. He had a hand in all three goals in that first half where Chelsea were just blown away. Yeah, they were blown away. And I think that, you know, we could talk about Chelsea as much as we like, but the fact is, is that City got the time and space and what it showed is that when you give players of that quality, that kind of time and space, they're going to hurt you and it's going to be very difficult to try and come back. When you look at the, it's the, the areas where they'd be able to pick up the ball, you'd have thought that that's a place where Chelsea, without a striker, Chelsea, without City having an out-and-out -out striker, they would try and put themselves in a position where they stop that hole. Just to make sure that nothing can go through there. But it's very easy for them, a lot of space, and in the end, Gundogan turns and scores a very, very good goal. They were just too quick and clever for, uh, for Chelsea. Their movement, their energy, their pace of play, everything about them um, f for all of that game, not just the, the first half. Um, it was, they were just too good in every department for Chelsea and they couldn't get near them, they couldn't live with them, such was their ability and confidence on the ball. You know, they, they, they seem to be ready for a, a really top performance from a team that's going to put them under pressure. And then when they didn't get it, again, you could see the, the amount of time and space they've got. De Bruyne in a very dangerous position. Great run from Phil Foden. And, um, you know, I think Thiago Silva's got to stay on his feet. He's got to clear that. But then a lot of space for him to finish. But he finishes it well. But I think that they were ready for that kind of performance, whereas Chelsea, <clears throat> they didn't seem Normally to be Normally in that ready. situation there, Zuma or uh, Thiago would expect to be marking a centre-forward. But such was the intelligence of the Manchester City players, in particular De Bruyne and Foden and Gundogan. They just went in the little holes and they went in the little pockets. And because the centre-halves and the, and the defenders, all of them, even including the full-backs, were reluctant to go in and, and mark them, then they just, that's how they, they caused the damage. I mean, this is, it's, this is like watching under-10s football, the way Chelsea defended there when they, they had the free kick and then how open they, uh, they were and they, they left themselves vulnerable to that, to that attack and, and were punished in there. It was just it was unbelievable. unbelievable. Kante's got an option there, just play it out there. But, like, for them to be that open you know, on free kick, it's, you know, this is a... This is, there's big problems. There's problems there. I think there's problems with intensity. There's problems with maybe attitude um, because we saw it against um, we saw it against Arsenal. It's something that Frank talks about a lot. But saying that, you're coming up against City. You've you've got to be ready for that because City are an excellent side. There'll be Chelsea fans listening to what Rice he's just said saying problems with attitude <laughs> when we are playing Manchester City at Stamford Bridge. How how do you explain an, an accusation like that? Well, you can't. You can't go against what he said because we fully expected... I mean, we said it before the game, and I said it. What, I want, what would you want from Chelsea to begin with? We want them to have an exciting start, to get after Manchester City with the problems that they've had through illness, um, with the goalkeeper making his debut today. We want them to have a real good go and show the intensity in the first 10 or 15 minutes that they mean business because coming into the game, they were on the back of some criticism and they're mm. under the cosh. 
and they desperately needed a win to get their season back on track. I mean, it was completely the opposite from that. We never saw any of that. We never saw any intensity, never seen any closing down. Uh, we never seen anyone prepared to put tackles in. And Wright is absolutely right in what he says. That is it. That has to be a huge worry for Frank Lampard. It does. And we will touch more on that when we come back. We hope to speak to both. Pep, well, that was, was that an exceptional performance from your side, particularly bear in mind they had problems you had going into the game? Yeah, we arrive. Yeah, it's normal. So we cannot expect the first minutes. They press us. They they push us. We suffer a little bit, not not much, because we concede almost anything uh, except the goal the last minute. But we play really well. So of course the result is incredible for us to win here in Stamford Bridge. But especially the way we played, you cannot win titles when you're performing day by day. It's not getting better. It's not good uh, because. In this competition, especially in the Premier League, you have to to play. First is the game, and after the results come later. How conscious were you prior to this game that you hadn't been winning away at big six arrivals? Well, uh, Chelsea is one of the strongest teams, so we cannot deny it. Now they are suffering for the last games, the results, but you see the quality of the players, you see the, the bench, it's good. but. We had a plan, we tried to play in a certain way that we were in the past and, uh, and it worked. So the, the, the players were incredible, fantastic in, in all departments. When we defend press high, when we defend in our box, we were solid and especially with the ball. So we are a team that we have to play in one certain rhythm. We cannot play like another team, like everything is up and down, up and down. We have to play in our rhythm. A lot of thousand passes, passes, passes in the right moment attack. That's why we built or we won the Premier Leagues in that way, with a more patient, more calm. And uh, that is, we miss a little bit for many reasons. Uh, we miss a little bit this tempo and, uh, and today, today we got it. Do you think that's perhaps the most significant thing about today? The fact that you played like you did in the past and you had that tempo of previous We don't seasons. have quality, we don't have the physicality players in the quality of our players to make actions for the 40 metres, transitions, quick transitions. Maybe Sterling? A little bit Kevin, but not much. The other one is you have to play with the ball. And uh, you can rest with the ball, you create problems to the opponent, the confident, and that's what you have to do. So we have to, from the keeper for the striker, we have to, to, to put the ball on the grass, make thousand passes in the right moment, try when we have the moments to attack them. So well. Interesting what he said in his first answer there, mm. Ian, about uh, he expected Chelsea to come straight at them. It's like what we said. You... <laughs> Simply because of the team he's putting out with no focal point, you know, people say, well, what does City do? City didn't have to do too much today because if you don't press City and you give them time from the back to be able to, to pass it into midfield, then you're giving people like Gundogan the opportunity to drop into the number 10 role, De Bruyne, Sterling, all of those guys dropping in there and making things happen. It was very easy for them because, like he said, they'd done nothing to them. They made City play exactly how they wanted to play. They didn't have to impose any kind of game on them. They just, they just they sat off them and they just took them apart. Yeah, Chelsea never laid a glove on them. They, from start to finish, really. I mean, City were as comfortable in a game as they have been this season, which when you think about that and the players they were up against and the team they were playing against was, was unbelievable. I mean, we, we all expected Chelsea to come out and have a right good fight and a right good go. And they offered nothing from uh, from that point of view. But you've, that's all right saying that about Chelsea. What you have to say about Manchester City is, is how well they handled the situation. Because he said they went in with a game plan. That game plan was to pass them to death. <laughs> and they did that. And Chelsea couldn't get near them. Yeah. And let's just remind... I know they've got a big squad, but let's just remind ourselves. No Edison. Mm -hmm. No Laporte. Yeah. No Walker. No Fernandinho. No Aguero. No Jesus. Yeah, but then you're talking about Stones finding his form, Ruben, Day Ruben Diaz finding, like, playing unbelievably for them. Um, Gundogan, um, I thought, was, was excellent today. You know what you're going to get from Kevin De Bruyne. Um, but, like, even Sinjenko coming in, they just all just slip in to know what they're doing. Foden, somebody that, you know, for the, for the amount of minutes he doesn't get, the consistency that he shows on a regular basis is unbelievable to the levels that he's, he's trying to reach. I cannot imagine how good he's going to be when he's playing as regularly as Sterling is and, and De Bruyne, and when he can actually have his place in that side to just continue to grow. I don't know how good he can be. He can be anything he wants. Mm. Have we seen City 
at a level that more recognisable today? And is that perhaps ominous with the amount of games still? Yeah, well, certain to today. I mean, when you, when I was at the game when they played West Brom at home, and they couldn't beat them. I mean, judging that performance and <coughs> this performance that we've just witnessed, chalk and cheese. So very much like other teams in the league, they've had their issues. They've been unpredictable at, at times, but that was Manchester City at their very, very best today. 